As we shall surely see, there were many subcategories to the Karban Mincha, one of which was a Karban Mincha that was brought for the purposes of the atonement by an individual who could not afford an animal sacrifice. Vayikra 5.11 states that such a Karban Mincha contained no oil nor spices, just the fine flour. As with every Karban Mincha, there was a Kmitzah process where the officiating Kohen would scoop up a three-fingered handful of the flour was burnt upon the Mizbeach. And with that, the Chippealav HaKohen Al Chatato, the Kohen facilitated an atonement for the individual for his or her sin and the Nislach law. The individual was forgiven. If we refer back to the original account of the Korba Mincha in Vayikra Perak 2, we are told that the Hanoteret Mincha Mincha La'aron Levanav that the re remainder of the flower offering was retained by the Kohen for personal use with the requirement that it be treated as Kodesh Kodashim. In Vayikra 5.12, the Pasukim dealing with the Karban Mincha that came as an atonement, while mention is made of the Kemitsa process, no mention is made as to what was done with the residual flower. This is an issue that is addressed in the Talmud Bavli, Masech Menachot 72b. The Gemara is built around a Mishnah that lists 10 different subcategories of a Korban Mincha. Included in those 10 subcategories is the Minchat Choteh, the Mincha offering that is brought by one who seeks atonement for one's sins. Regarding these 10 categories, the Mishnah states, Ve'elu Menachot Nikmatzot. The following 10 categories of the Korban Mincha undergo a process of Kemitza and that Vishirehem la Kohanim. The residual flower becomes the property of the Kohen. The Gemara asks Minalan, what textual basis is there for the residual of the other 10 subcategories belonging to the Kohen? And in particular, the Minchat Choteh, which technically is a sin offering rather than a Mincha offering. In response to its rhetorical question, the Gemara writes, the Ketiva, where the text explicitly writes, then Ketiva, we follow those explicitly written instructions. However, Odelo Ketiva, where the text is not explicit, then Ketiv Ba Vezot Torah Tamincha, Hakreva Tor Bnei Aaron Lefnei Hashem, that a single law applies to the Korban Mincha, all ten categories, in which there is to be a Kemitzah, and that the Hanoteret Mimeno Yochlu Aharonovanav, that the residual belongs to the Kohanim for personal use. So what we have here is two options as to how one interprets the drash of Vezot Torah Tamincha. Both options agree that the use of this format is to be interpreted midrashically. Where they differ will be the application of this drash. According to Rashi, the drash is applied to the Mincha offering brought by a Kohen, that although not mentioned specifically in the text, that Mincha comprises all three items, the flour, the oil, and the spices, while the Gemara's drash applies the Zot Torah Mincha to inform us that the residual flour following the Kemitsa is retained by the Kohen. A possible explanation suggested by the Rebbe to justify what seems to be an unnecessary commentary by Rashi to Vayikra 6-7 is that Rashi needs to formally reject the interpretation provided by the Gemara in Menachot 72b. As noted, this was merely a possible explanation justifying Rashi's commentary to Zot Torah Tamincha. The Rebbe in the Sikhe, however, will maintain that from the standpoint of the Pshuta Shel Mikra, the need to reject the Gemara's approach is not justified.